welcome to Pantheon of the Geeks. You join us for an unboxing of lots of Sylvana for goodness. So here we have the Endless Spells for the Sylvana, the Awakened Wildwood, which looks cool, um, the dice, Yay. the uh, new War Scroll cards, and also the new Battle Tomb. <coughs> we saw sneak previews of this that was leaked kind of thing and then they were like oh no they're not coming out yet and I was pretty upset about that <laughs> I was like no how can you do that to me but now they've all come out so I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what these things do actually just be happy you've got something I know I know that's what I'm saying where's my Iron Jaws battle tome where's my new Iron Jaws models this, I'm in a strop by Iron Jaws. This is a video about Sylvana, so I'm, I'm making that point clear. Not about Iron Jaws, Sylvana. I'll well, we complain about it at the end then. You'll just complain bitterly throughout the entire thing, probably. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> Although in all seriousness, it, this looks cool. It does actually. So it's very, very twig-like. Twiglets. Twiglets. So. So which twiglets? Would you want? To should think? we undo the endless spells first of all and have a look at those? Yeah. Before we have a look at the book and such like. Yeah, I want, I want to put these together. And I want to put them together and see what they all look yeah. like. They just look awesome. The no, no, I don't. Let's do that. So, um, there is the box. So what are these and the spells? So we have the uh, glade worm. This thing here. Mm -hmm. The um, spite swarm hive. Uh, oh, okay. I'm trying to read the. And the vengeful and the floating tree, skull root, yeah. floating tree, floating tree of doom. Yes. Okay. So. Are you opening this? Yes, I can. Actually, the knife opening. Thank you. I'm trusted with this. So I'm not trusted with the snippies. The the snippies are snipping. Mm. I'm not doing very well on this. <laughs> There's no way to run the knife along. Oh there. Oh yeah. There's always a place to put a knife. <laughs> That's only more sinister than it makes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Same <thing. laughs> Oh, okay. Right. right. So. about the boxes is they've obviously got this new oh the new hammer the new hammer, hammer eagle logo hammer eagle logo hammer eagle logo mm. eagles and hammers okay so we've got all these on two screws yes a different are they a different colour of plastic as well no it's the same colour as the other endless spells and ah. some of the scenery it's a thicker thicker different plastic. type of plastic they've used although the, the, it is better than some of the older scenery mm. plastic that was terrible how oh, the middle does that look though this looks like two in The, the carapace pieces. No wonder yeah. you like these. Right. <laughs> okay. So, there's not a lot of sprue there, actually. It's all model. Mm -hmm. so, that's that's a change. Book. So, we have the other two bases. The other one's obviously on there. Mm -hmm. Which one are we doing first? All right. I'll just start with the glade worm. <laughs> By all accounts, let's operate the manual zoom. Whee. There we go. Right. So. C2 and C1 first. That's the two big sides of the, of the beastie. The laid worm. And then we have part C3, which is like a lower jaw. And then you stick that on C4, which is the base. And that's a model complete. So let's get these parts off and get these put together. Okay, so we have uh, the two parts of the monster, which go together quite well. And then we have um, the jaw which goes underneath. Yep, mm -hmm. fits on what. And I'm now going to attach into this socket there by the looks of it. It goes that way around. Sort of Loch Ness monster style. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just to put it in, it just reminded me of that picture. Sorry. It does, so, it does remind know, me of a tyranid. We know that a lot of this monster is a glade worm, which makes perfect sense to me. It does, it does look like a tyranid, it's got the same sort of tyranid yeah. scales and everything. Yeah. 
could easily convert that into something. Vanilla lace. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that together. In the meantime, we can start taking the spite swarm hive parts off. So that's A2, A3, and A1, and A4. And again, that's it, that's all the parts for this. We'll get those parts off and have a look. Okay, so there is the Glade Worm finished together. Fucking cool. Now we need to stick the hive together. So for that, we have part A1 and part A3, which is this small swarm. There's three little nodules in this. There's one though, there's well, actually four, but for three different appendages, shall we say, of swarm. Uh, one goes in there, like so. And then A2 will go in there. So that first one was A3, that's A2. Uh, those two are going to go on that part. So that's the part with the hive part on, not the part with the rock on. And then you have this big part, which is A4, which is going to fit on to the, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these together, and then we'll come back to the hive swarm. In the meantime, I've already started cutting off parts for this, the uh, vengeful skull root. Yeah, so you want B1 and B2 and B3. We get those parts and then we shall return. Okay, so here is the swarm. <laughs> Pretty funky. Pretty cool that. I think you were just saying it reminds you of a Yeah. Kind of is like just a bigger version of the swarm. Yeah, because she's got it coming out of her shoulders and it in her hand as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah. So next up we have the ventral skull root. Uh, we have B1, which is the part with the uh, the hole in the There we go. And then we have uh, B2, which is this central piece, which looks like the middle of the Colonel Hunters and the, the Tree Lords. Just one moment, I think I've given you the wrong piece. Have you? Yeah. Have you really? I've just noticed this on here says B1. Is it? That one's that one's got to be B4, perhaps. Is there no number on it? No, there wasn't. You see. I'll get the staff these days. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> Apology yeah. accepted, Captain Leader. Um, right, so taking a while. Though. I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back and we have the right part now, which is this one. Also has a hole in it. I didn't realise it with the holes in both sides. Yeah. Uh, but it makes sense because you can see this through it. So, most, again, much like the tree lord and stuff. So, this is part B1. And. Uh, this part B2 should, I believe, go this way around. There's two little notches on there. You can see those little circular notches. And yes, they fit into there a lot better than the other one did. Um, and B3 goes on there. Again, there's like a little clip and that fits into place. So those two parts need gluing into place, at which point we can then use the other parts, which we saw, and again that has the same adapter there, almost the same thing there, but obviously it'll be, it'll be a mirror image, and that will go on top, so we need to glue those in place. And finally we have these branches, which is B7, B5 and B9, so we'll get those cut off while I stick this bit together. Okay, so there is the tree so far, so we have the three branches to put on, here's the branches and have this, uh, this kind of a joint. Uh, on that, that goes in there. Um, goes in fairly well. We'll need glue, obviously, but you can position it. There's, there's some play in that, put it that way. And I'm not sure whether it's it's that specific in which order they go in because they've all got the same kind of attachment. So if you did get them in the wrong place, it don't think it really matters to be honest. So just not like the uh, the original Wildwood. You have a bit of freedom on where you put things. There's a whole uh, on the there, so we'll get those glued on, and we'll also glue this. That's that one. We'll also glue this and the swarm to the bases, and then we'll come back with all three of them. Okay, so swarm on base, looking cool. We have 
43 on base. <laughs> on there as well. Actually, I might. No, that's alright. Let's go spend thing, I think. Looking cool. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Glade Worm. Awesome. Cool. So, these guys are looking. If I see, I might, oh, I might see a lot of things in battle. Mm -hmm. I might see those in battle. Yeah. Maybe not so much, to be fair. Simply because I know they're going to be beating up Iron Jaws. So the Vengeful Skull Root is a predatory endless spell. It can move up to 8 inches and can fly. Swoosh. Uh, magic to summon it. Um, only a Sylvanath Wizard can attempt to cast. It has a casting value of 6 and you can set it up wholly within 6 inches of the caster. Its abilities, so when this model is set up, the player set it up can ima immediately make a move with it. Uh, that's Uproot Spirit. Terror's Unearthed. Um, if a unit fails battle shock tests within three inches of any models with this ability, add D3 to the number of models at three. Gouch. This ability has no effect on units with the Sylvanath keyword. And Strangle Roots. After this model has moved, each unit that has any models it passed across suffers D3 mortal wounds or D6 mortal wounds if that unit is also within six, three inches of any awakened wild woods, this ability has no effect on Sylvana. So we really need him next to a wild wood to get that kind of thing yes. kicking off, yeah. So what we're we going for next, the Glade Worm. So again that's predatory, up to eight inches and can fly. Summon the Glade Worm. Fly. Yeah. Uh, summon flying worm. Flying worm. <laughs> Just shoots out of the ground. Yeah. Doom. Like a pipe <laughs> <laughs> Like a shrew coming at you. A shrew. So the uh, summoning uh, has a casting value of seven and you um, put it within six inches of the caster. So we've got abilities, burrowing doom. When this model is set up, the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it. Death from below. After this model has moved, roll a dice for each unit within one inch of it. On a 3 plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. No well, effect on Sylvanus. I'm sure it's a 2 in a way. It's death from below. It's got to be. Healing Mist. So after this model has moved, roll a dice for each Sylvanus unit, wholly within 6 inches of this model. On a 3 plus, heal up to D3 wounds allocated to that unit. So it's also a healer. <laughs> God, help me. So the. Uh. <laughs> And you got the spiteful swarm. Yeah, that's um, casted on a value of seven, um, and you uh, put it wholly within fifteen inches of the caster. Oh, so the hive nourishes at the end of the hero phase. If this model is on the battlefield, the player who set it up can pick one of the effects below and immediately resolve that effect. The same unit cannot be picked to be affected by this ability more than once per hero phase. So we've got either Vital Venoms, roll a dice for each Silver Neth unit wholly within 8 inches of this model. On a 2 plus, add 3 inches to that unit's normal move and charge moves until the end of the turn. It's like combat drugs, basically. Yeah. Or Shielding Swarm, uh, roll a dice for each Silver Neth unit wholly within 8 inches of this model. On a 2 plus, re roll saves. Sorry, re-roll save rolls of a 1 for attacks that target that unit until the end of the turn. Alright. So it's like a, a shield. shield, yeah. Swarmy shield or swarmy, swarmy booster. Booster, yeah. Oh, great. Alright. <laughs> shall we look at the new Wildwood? We shall, yes. The Wildwood. The Wildwood. 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 So, there is the I shall present you with the, the knife of opening again. Okay. It's like a... Yeah, it's a box, this one, isn't it? So it's got. Yes, the giveaway is that it's sort of rectangular and made of cardboard and contains things and it can be opened. I'm going to say nothing to that at all. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> say nothing. Again, it has the new symbol on. Yeah. It's cool, actually. Not bad symbol. When I went box, I meant like this, not like the box that you open from the top. And oh, right. it is a box you open from the top. That's the top. 
across the bottom. I'm just going to go in there. <laughs> because you... <laughs> so pass me that wrong piece before. <laughs> You're disgusted with me. I'm disgusted okay. with myself for doing it. I'm I can't joking. believe it's not. I'm <laughs> joking. Uh, ooh, good one, it. So we have... Lots of trees. Lots of bits of tree. Mm-hmm. Lots, uh, of so lots of bits of bark oh, lots leaves. of leaves please be easier to put together than the old one and stay together and not fall apart it already looks like it will be because the leaves are actually part of the branches which is a winner winner to be fair apart from some of them seem to have like little they're just like a clump to add. Hmm. which ones? that one there, those two there I saw that and there's, two, there's two on here as well. But they do have joins and They do have joins. I'm assuming they connect to something else, I hope. They just have better joins. Yeah. So. Oh, they're terrible. I had to pin oh, most yeah. of them. They were a nightmare. In place. Right. Right, so. Right, so we have A1 and A2. Which is pieces of bark. Uh, tree trunk. They also have these funky sort of circular bits to help you denote the inside of the wildwood so you don't need the base that it's on the idea is to make it a bit easier to put troops in the middle of it because mm -hmm. everything that's between the trees and in the trees counts as being inside the wood so hopefully it will I mean there's no no, no reason you can't use the old wildwoods as wildwoods you know, as for said that it's perfectly legit to do so this is just a, a different model the same thing. So, just okay. like any other model they've ever produced, really. I'm not just written out again. <laughs> so we'll get these parts off. A2, A1, A3 and A4. And... I'm curious. And then we do the next uh, tree. So we'll get, get them off one at a time. Okay, so... These two parts need to go together, like they fit together quite well. Um, they will go like that. Then we do have these connectors there, which apparently these will attach to. Like so. Is that the right one? Or is that one? I'm going to go the right first time, to be fair. I'll go on that. And that one will go. On there, yeah, there's actually three connectors on that one. Like that. So I'll go ahead and stick that together. You see, you already see all these parts here where the branches are going to attach to. Um, so they are similar to the branches from the original wildwood, apart from obviously the leaves are attached, which is always the pain that the leaves kind of falling off. So let's see what's next. We have A5, A6, A7, and A8. Then we also have A10, uh, A10, A9, A11, and A12, which are the other two bodies of the trees, basically. So we'll go ahead and stick, uh, get those out. I think they go together the same way. And if they don't, I'll be back. Otherwise, I'll just stick all three together because they look like they go together exactly the same way. Okay, so what we have now are three trees, trunks at least, that look like this, it's still drying, that's why I moved, and they'll go on the battlefield or something like that. So then we have the next parts, so on these we have a couple of adapters at the top which are very much like the original wildwood adapters, not, not very big, but they have proper pegs on them. And then we have two of these canopy pieces, which are the pieces we were looking at on the screen before where I said there's a little hole underneath, like this. So these are completely modular, so any two canopy pieces, one's going to go on this side, one's going to go on that side, and all three trees have the same two sort of branch going off them. So we can put them on in any order we want. Um, they'll be very much like the originals, just to, as a topper. But hopefully they will stick on a bit better and that is a better adaption under there so hopefully they will stick on a bit better and then the rest of it are these sort of better branches uh, we need eight of those per tree 
and again you can choose any ones you want. So we're just going to go ahead and stick these together and come back with a finished wildwood. Okay we're back, I have stuck them all together, it's taking ages for these to dry, um, we had to do a bit at a time. They just dropped this one and nothing fell off, so that's one good thing, it looks like once they're on their own, but getting them on seems to take ages. Uh, we've got this one here, which is still drying, on part of it, and this one here, which is on, which we're working on, which is one of those little Citadel uh, model stands with the two grips to hold the leaves in place while they dry, that's kind of worked pretty well actually. <laughs> Probably could have done with a couple of those. There we go, so that is the wild wood. Uh, it looks awesome actually. This one I can pick up, this one's dry, this is the first one. So yeah, it does look really good. And I said I dropped this on the ground and nothing fell off, so <laughs> that's always a good sign. Yeah, I like the fact that there's like bits in the middle that you can put all your army in kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that it's a lot more open, whereas the other one is like a pack of trees that you can't fit your armies in. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that the trees were separate from the base Yeah. on the other one, that was good, but then there was never enough room to really put anything on the base. No. And because there was stuff on the base anyway, it was really hard to put the models there. Then you had to leave the trees off and just imagine they were there, at least with this one. You've got quite a bit of room in the middle. Makes it a lot more <clears throat> eerie, I yeah. think. I think these make brilliant wildwoods and they look different. Mm. I think from that respect, it's probably worth using these as well and use the other ones as just normal forests. Yeah. Um, or just back up wild woods for spell and stuff, maybe. Probable, yeah. yeah. But uh, mm. I do like these. They're nice. I also, the thing I do like about these is they kind of look like swamp trees on the bottom because they've got that overgrown sort of thing. The other trees, the original, well, the first tree just look like normal trees, really. But these look pretty good in a swamp. Um, as well, which is cool because I've got like a swamp ball from Malifaux, so <laughs> that could work quite well. Right, so what are the rules for these? So um, these are a single terrain feature consisting of uh, three to six Citadel wood models. Uh, each tip of each Citadel wood model must touch the tip of a different Citadel wood model with the tips of all the models pointing inward so that a ring is formed. The battlefield inside the ring is treated as being part of the awakened wildwood. Um, overgrown wilderness. Models are not visible to each other if an imaginary line, straight line, one millimetre is wide, drawn between the closest points of the two models, crosses more than one inch of an awakened wildwood. This scenery rule does not apply if even a model can fly. Boing. Boing. Roused by magic. In the hero phase, if a spell is successfully cast by a wizard, wholly within six inches of an awakened wildwood, and not unbound with a roll of a dice for each unit within one inch of that awakened wildwood, which does not have the silver neth keyword, on a five plus that, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds after that spell's effect has been resolved. Wildwood. At the end of each of the charge phase, roll a dice for each unit within one inch of the awakened wildwood, which does not have the silver neth keyword. On a six, that suff that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. So pretty much the same as the the woods that if yeah like we got <coughs> with the iron jaws when they kept getting too close to. Don't get eaten by trees. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> it hurt. It always does. Right, so that's the models. Mm -hmm. the, the, I'm trying, yeah, it's actually, I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. There we go. So that's set now. Cool. Right. So there is the book. The Silver Earth book. Look through the book. We've also got the dice and the, the cards as well. Yeah. Look. Do you want to uh, I'll look at the, the dice? Get them out of the packet and just see what kind of tokens you get with the cards as well. Mm. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mm 
Nice. Mm -hmm. That one. There we go. Got a new book smell as well. Love the new book mm. smell. So, silver now. These are dice. Oh, yes. I love dice. <laughs> Ready to get them nice. Right. Uh, so that's what we get. The command points. Um, Mystic Shield, Acorn of the Ages, Seed of Rebirth, Place of Power, Tree Song, Soul and Foreign, and Enraged. And on this one, where's the other one? You get um, Ultimate Sacrifice, Tanglethorn Thicket, and Vital Venoms. Oh, Shielding Swarm as well. Silent Communication. Oh, I think those are the spell, the ones for, um, is it the, uh, that's Endless Spell. Yeah. On there. So there's, there's four types of dice, four colours. And there's four of each. This is so weird. There's like a dark green one. There's a guy picking that up. There's a light green one. A orange and blue one. I think I think actually I think all the skulls on these are blue, aren't they? It's the one thing they have in common. I think all the skulls are blue. And then a white one. Alright, oh, <clears throat> cool. What kind of, oh, like a marbly kind of yeah. wood, aren't they? So you've got two Three, four, five. Presume the skull's one. And that symbol six. Yeah. It's really six. Skull one. I would imagine. I think so. Yeah. I would, I would say the skull is going to be one. Very nice. He's really weird. They are, aren't they? They're, they're neither one thing nor the other. I am not. Oh, and they're a nice set, them actually. Because the original um, the silver dice, they were, they were, they were, wooden they were proper dice. wooden dice. They're yeah, nice as well. they are. Cool. So the book, let's carry on. So we have the silver nice. floor. We have Happy some cool pictures. Time, Time of, of dawn. The war. Seasons of War. Seasons of War. Yeah. Forest Host. <laughs> cool. It's also, the Seasons of War is also the opening track for World War. Is it? Soul Wars. Soul Wars. Uh, great Cycles. And tons and tons of stuff for you to read there. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So that's the... Real moot. Those are the... Um, Factions that you can have. Uh, Oakenbrow. Oak Wargroves. Oakenbrow. Grenade. Mm. Gnarroot. Harvest Boom. Iron Bark. Deadwood. Also <laughs> Heartwood and Winter Leaf. Lariel. We still need some box. Yeah. Noble Spirits. And then we've got like beastery section. I'm going to go into yeah. all the stuff. Oh, that's cool. Nice double spread page. Preload. Yeah, you don't like him because he kept entangling you. I don't like any of them because they keep killing me. <laughs> nice pictures there. Some of the painted models. Mm -hmm. Some ideas for me anyway. For... Although I do have the painting guide that came out. Yeah, um, the original one. That's cool. Yeah, that's a nice colour. That's a nice one. It's really stood out as being really green that one. Oh dear. Dear. I might borrow that so I can remember how to paint it. Got well, some paint tips in here. Oh cool. Paint silver now. <coughs> Oak and brown. 
Now we dark bark. Green bark, grey bark. Mm. Winter leaf. That's cool. White bark. Harvest broom. That's that one, that white bark one. Mm. Base coat of powdered witch flesh. Beltan green. Lemon medium. Lamenta gel. Ah. Mm. It's yellow tone from. Nice. Blade variants. Very nice. I like that orange one. Yeah, it's dirty, isn't mm. it? All the way. Um, ever queen details, so that's quite cool. So, the allegiance abilities there forest spirits, ways of the war groves. I can see that. If you read to pause, command traits. So, you got a lot of stuff here to add in to make uh, yeah. to make even more clearly. <laughs> you me yet. Yeah. Do you like oh. get some new stuff? There are the rules for the awaken mode. I wish they would. <laughs> Oaken brow. Do you not name a lot? I think that's the. Oaken brow. Is that not the main one that they normally paint? Keep reminding me of Lord of the Rings, though. <laughs> oh, well, The Hobbit, too. The Hobbit. Sorry. Yeah. Oaken shield. Iron bark, winter leaf. Redwood, Harvest Spoon. For all these cool rules for all these things. Oh, then we got the Awakening in the Grove Battle Plan. Path to Glory. Path to Glory. Silver so, uh, Warbands. Hmm? Who's doing War Crown? Who's doing the book? They're not in any of the factions of the preview, Jack. Oh. I was hoping they might have some actually, because. Order's just got like stone casts <coughs> and I can't remember who else is in there. There's, there's... Doors of Cain and uh, Adna. Yeah, well, where's the rest of them? Where's Where's, where's Card Noble Lords, the best faction from there, I don't know. <laughs> now Sylvaneth's the best faction. <laughs> uh, so we've got the War Scrolls, Free Free Lords of the, the Clan, Clan. Household, Forest Folk, and Outcasts. There she is, Alariel the Ever Queen. The scrolls. Dracia. So, nothing new really. Archer of the is new. Well, he wasn't in the other one. New from Blinker. New from Blinker. We've got uh, the yellow thorn. Oh, yeah, from. Uh, yeah. Oh, got, yeah the... I've got them to paint actually. Yeah, you've got them to do, yeah. don't you? Yeah. From, from, uh... You've got so many twiglets to do. I know. Enough hunters, glade worm, spikes fall hiding. Yeah, it's all and um, the fish battle and its costs. Yeah, yeah. so that's our yeah. first look at it anyway. Yeah. And these are the war scroll. Yeah, so we've got a lariel. It's like a double one that you open. The Ever Queen. Shiny. Reflected and shiny. Yeah. Reflecting yeah, everything in the room. Revenant. Arch Revenant. Yeah, so hopefully that's the same from. Hopefully yeah. we'll have a look at that. Uh, Drachia. It's another double one. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's see if she's got the same. I think thing she's got some well. different roles. I think she doesn't have to choose between being. Evil or just annoyed? I don't know. Oh, the, the yeah. Two, you know, just... yeah, I can't remember because uh, Spirit of Dirty. Spirit of Dirty. Yay. You just go Spirit of Dirty, haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah. yeah he's knocking about somewhere. Can't see anything else. Oh, he's there. Tree Lud. Ancient Tree Lud. Yeah. Mm. And then another Tree one. Tree This is the last of the... The foldy ones. The foldy ones. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then Branch Witch. Branch Wraith. You don't have any of those. I That's the one, one you don't have anything of. Yeah. I thought there might have been Branch Wraith in that link. It was the one thing that 
or thought would be in there that wasn't. I think it's quite um, an old model, isn't yeah. it? So I'll probably have to order it online. Probably. It's good. It'd be good to have though. It would. It would finish me, me army off. Just a bit there. different. I mean, the art is an awesome model. So. Oh, it's gorgeous model. Like. Uh, so Yield Thurry and the Guardians. Tree Revenants. Spite Revenants. Kernel Thunters. More Kernel Thunters. And more kind of thumbs. We've we'll split them all time. up now, yeah. so that's good. Threads. Then we've got Blade Worm, Spike Swarm, Ventil's Root, and the Awakened World. So all oh, the cards that we need. Cool. That's cool. I'm yeah. glad they split the Kernel Thunters up because it was a bit of a, a pain sometimes trying to see what their stats were. Yeah, they're so, a bit small. Yeah. So. so there you go. Okay. Awesome sauce. Yes. So. That is the silver that I've been waiting for for a while. Yes. So you got a boost on your, on your spells, obviously. Mm -hmm. A nice new, cool looking wood. And uh, there we go. I'm really pleased with them, actually. You're think, pleased with that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think it'll be a nice little addition. I'll just hope they do yours next, to be quite honest, I really do. Yeah, I think they end up draws are over Juno. Yeah. They need something. Yeah, I know, it's just I mean they could do with they could do with some sort of endless spells or shaming spells. Yeah. And uh they could definitely do with because every every army's getting this scenery piece. I don't think they should have a scenery piece. I think they should have like a massive battering ram. I've said that before though. They should have something different because they're about destroying buildings, not building things. So they should have like a battering ram that destroys other people's sceneries, like werewolves. Uh, oh, <laughs> controversial! <laughs> or, or like a burning yeah. pyre or something like that. Yeah, you know? it's like when they re come to do the card and overlords, they really shouldn't have something that's static either. No. Maybe they could have like, I don't know, like a, a mobile tanker or something. A cloud. A cloud. Yeah. Yeah. A, a little mini cloud city that falls in. <laughs> a little yeah. bit of cotton wool that just moves yeah. around the table. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway, that is the silver now. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the upgrade to Claire's army. Yay. She used to get all this painted. Yeah. Current, she's currently painting fire slayers, aren't we? I am, yeah. Yeah. You're, um, they're, they're coming along. They are, they are, actually, yes. My, my goblins are ready. Raring to go in a battle. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have you been doing? Um, I've been painting something up for a painting competition. Oh, yes, we both have actually. Yes. Um, well, after we've entered in the competition, we'll show that on the channel. Yeah. Um, um, what else have I been doing? Putting together the rest of my um, Silver Death Army from the box set, the starter set that I got. Second starter set. Second yeah. starter set, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got more uh, dryads and now a spirit of dirty. Yeah. Um. So we're we're kind of on track to still be playing game Tale of Two Gamers Part Two. Yeah. Part One. I'm still waiting for you to do. Allow wow. We're gonna have to do a live. So we're gonna have to unbox that at some point. So stay tuned. That that might be an unboxing soon. Soon, sooner rather than later, I think. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and us uh, going on at the end here. Mm -hmm. It's taken ages for these trees to actually go together. So this is taking, for us, this has been a very long time. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we will uh, see you again soon for the next videos we do. Uh, next week though, next week's War Cry. War Cry. War Cry. M more, more stuff for me to paint. Yeah. Well, I'll do the scenery. And... Uh, <laughs> One of the war bands. We'll end up both doing the scenery probably because yeah. I need to uh, get my dry brush brushing skills up and running again. You're doing well, you're doing well. Being taught. Being taught, yes. So stay tuned for that. We have actually already seen one of the boxes in a shop. Uh, so we've actually had a preview of it anyway. So it looks yes. really good. And uh, I saw the models at least. Um, on the sprues. On the sprues. Didn't get a chance to really look at the rule book or anything. No, because. It was all um, bound up and everything, but yeah. we were allowed to unbox it and have a look we'll at the sprues, sprues and sprues. stuff, which were so, like awesome. They looked gorgeous. I really like the look of it. Yeah. So stay tuned for Warcry next week. 
And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon, guys. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.